Yo, what up? Welcome to another episode of the Oakland Warriors podcast. I'm Patrick, flying solo. And now the Warriors, your Golden State Warriors, are riding a really gnarly three game losing streak. They took a massive L against the non rival <laughs> Memphis Grizzlies in Memphis, 131 110. It was their third road loss in a row. And they haven't proven they can play well on the road. They haven't played defense on the road. I mean, you ever feel like this season is just, it's like Groundhog Day, right? It's like the same thing over and over. A couple steps forward, a few steps back, one step forward, one step back, hovering around 500. Right now, the Warriors are just one game over 500 again. And after that five-game winning streak at home, which gave us some hope, some cautious optimism, they've lost three in a row. And although they go back home, they play the Bucks and then the Suns. The Suns won't have Kevin Durant, of course, who injured himself in pregame warm-ups a couple nights back. But there's a potential for the Warriors to, after winning five in a row, coughing up five more. You know what I mean? And it's frustrating. It's really, really frustrating. And I've talked about this before, how, you know, when a team is bad, you can kind of agree, people can kind of agree with what makes them bad, right? Either they're too young or they're too hurt or they have a bad coach or stuff like that. When a team is good, you can tend to agree with other folks about why they're so good. Like they have the best players, they have the best system, they're healthy, et cetera, et cetera. But when a team, especially a team that is uh, the defending champs and a team that has, of course, title aspirations is hovering around 500 up until pretty much mid-March now, there's a lot of questions and there's a lot of finger pointing and there's a lot of accusations as to what the cause is, right? It's like Lacob because he didn't sign Gary Payton the second and he went too far in with the youngsters. It's Steve Kerr because he's not and hasn't given the youngsters a chance beyond Jonathan Kaminga. I mean, look at Moses Moody, right? You look at him and it's like that dude played in the Western Conference Finals against the Mavericks last season. And in a must win game in a season that feels like there have been 40 must win games. But in this must win game this late in the season in Memphis against a team that was missing John Morant, Steven Adams, and Brandon Clark, a team that had Dylan Brooks. And of course, Draymond Green went off on his podcast about Dylan Brooks. I'll get to that a little bit later. But a team like that, Moses Moody was not even in the building. He wasn't on the bench. It's not just like he couldn't get onto the court. He couldn't even travel with the team because he was with the G League. So that's how far he's fallen. And it's not so much an indictment of Moses Moody. Of course, there's blame to go around everywhere. But like that's how weird this season is, right? You couldn't have told me that last season or beginning of this season. Even if you didn't like Moody's game, there's no way you could have told me that. (laughs) <laughs> and that I would have believed you that if you had said Moses Moody would have gone from the Western Conference Finals to a critical game late in the season, being thousands of miles away in the G League, you know? So there's that. And is it the vet's fault because they are too stubborn because they're not open to the youngsters? Is it the youngsters fault because they're so young? <laughs> You know what I mean? I mean, you have a team that has a bunch of vets who, I don't know, they're worrying about where to send their kids to high school. And then you have uh, a bunch of kids who just left high school. There's a lot of things. And as I've said several times, once the season is over, whether it's in a month and the Warriors fall flat, don't get to the playoffs, losing the play-in, losing the first round, whatever, whether it's that or if they make this crazy inspired run, then... The story of the season will come out, will be told. You know what I mean? You'll see it in the reaction of 
Lacob, the front office. You'll see who's to blame. You'll see which direction they go in, no matter what, right? Hey, if they miraculously win the title, great. But, you know, at this point, it is really, 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 did I say really? Really frustrating to see the lack of effort because that's what I always talk about. You may lose, but compete. Compete. I'll give you some good news, I guess. Like, hey, the Warriors got smushed in a game where they didn't have Andrew Wiggins. They didn't have Jonathan Kaminga. They didn't have Gary Payton II, right? So this is not the Warriors team that you expect to see in the postseason. And let's be honest, those are their three most athletic dudes at this point. Their best uh, perimeter defenders and their best dunkers. And just guys who can compete with some of these younger Grizzlies teams, right? A couple years ago, when the Warriors lost to the Grizzlies in the playing game, it was clear that there was this kind of age and athleticism gap happening there. That's why when <laughs> you know they'd had Wiseman, he was injured at that point. When they drafted Kaminga, etc., I was like, okay, now the Warriors are going to have some young guys who can grow and compete against these dudes. Clearly, that happened a little bit last season, but it hasn't happened enough. Kaminga, of course, yes, but overall, overall. So that is looking at the bright side, right? It's like, oh, yeah, they didn't have these dudes. The con, the negative side of that is we have no idea when any of those guys are coming back. Kaminga, just like Kevin Durant, (laughs) he sprained or twisted his ankle in pregame warmups. And obviously that's, I mean, hopefully that's not serious, but... Hopefully, he'll come back soon, but we don't know. We don't know. If Kaminga is out for a couple weeks, then the Warriors are in a bad spot because we don't know what Wiggins is going through with his family, and hopefully, he's okay, everybody's okay, and that gets gets resolved soon, and Gary Payton II, we still haven't gotten an update. So, if those guys don't come back, any of them come back, in the next few weeks, it changes a lot of things because you don't have any point of attack. I mean, you have Dante DiVincenzo, but you know he's just not enough against some of these top tier first option guys off the dribble. So that's the <laughs> negative side of it, right? Who knows? Who knows? I mean, this season has been so star crossed, and I think at this point, just. Watch it play out. Let it play out. See what happens, right? There's going to be a lot of hand-wringing. And I said, I tweeted out before the or a day before the, the Memphis game, like, hey, if the Warriors lose this game, there's going to be a whole new level of panic and discussion about the Warriors. It's crazy because, you know, it made me think back to – some of the early dynasty years when you would see the videos of the team traveling, doing stuff together, being cohesive and whatnot. I'm not saying that's a big deal. Maybe they just moved on from that. Maybe it's not their thing anymore, but there's clearly something that's a bit of a disconnect. And again, that hopefully will likely come out as the season, the off season uh, moves on and moves forward. Steve Kerr went with a four-guard lineup against the Grizzlies. And I don't know if anyone thought that would work, and it 100% did not. He started uh, Steph, Clay, Poole, uh, Dante DiVincenzo, and Draymond Green. So Clay Thompson was the tallest guy on the court. Draymond 6'6", Clay 6'7". Clay was playing power forward. <laughs> I mean, what do you, what do you expect, right? I was like, is, is Looney hurt too? But we know Looney's banged up, but he was on the bench. He played. And it was just a recipe for disaster. And the fact that Draymond, I love Draymond. You know, I, I'm going to miss his trash talking maybe more than seeing him on the court. I mean, that that bit he had about Dylan Brooks, it was funny. And it's probably pretty true. You know, I, I agree with it. But the one thing that it showed me in this game is that the Warriors, you know, you know, they're getting up there and I'm not going to attribute this all to age, but hey, you can't will a team to victory anymore. You can't just 
make a win happen. You can't summon it. You know what I mean? Yes, a lot of it has to do with who's around you, but teams aren't scared and you're giving them the fuel. So, you know, it is what it is, right? I still think <laughs> Dylan Brooks is is the equivalent of a cartoon character, cartoon villain or whatever. You know, he just needs a twirly mustache or something. You know, and then Draymond afterwards says he doesn't care about wins in March. He doesn't get out of bed in March for stuff. And hey, that's great. That's great theater. That's great, like trash talking, whatever. But we'll see what happens. But I maintain, I maintain what I've been saying. If the Warriors can get healthy and whole and right, I'm sorry, it's Groundhog's Day to me. And this whole season is just a lot of the same stuff. So I'm going to say it again. If they get whole and healthy and right, they'll make noise. Will it be easy? No. You know, we know that Wiggins takes a while to get into rhythm, especially on offense. We know that, you know, Kaminga as a young player might take a little time to get up to speed again. We know that Gary Payton the second, as much as he's fit perfectly into the Warriors system previously, it'll take some while to get up to speed as well, to get used to things. Do they have that wiggle room whenever it is they come back? If they are fighting for a play-in spot, or just to get the sixth seed, you know, will it be enough? Maybe, maybe not. That's the confounding thing about this season. You know what I mean? Watching the Warriors play the Grizzlies, man, it was honestly just looked like a bunch of slow footed dudes. And I mean, Don Nelson would have loved that lineup. Are you kidding me? (laughs) I mean, it reminded me of the lineup that, I believe beat the Spurs in the 91 playoffs. They still had run TMZ, but they were running out Mario Alley, you know, (laughs) at power forward. So it's one of those things, and it clearly did not work. The Warriors are 27 and 7 at home and a disgusting 7 and 26 on the road. Nearly opposite, right? Just one game off. That one game is the one game that has the Warriors over 500. And if they can make a run in the postseason, if they get to the postseason, it will be a minor miracle. Because again, if Kerry Payton the second was healthy, if everybody was healthy, they could stick together and find their rhythm. But if you're going to add those pieces at the very end, it's not the same as Steph coming in from an injury last season and then picking up the pace and getting into rhythm. That's one dude. But you're looking to incorporate three guys in the next month. And hey, if Kaminga comes back in a couple days, great. That's just one person you don't have to worry about. You get your athleticism back. Hopefully he's not hampered by it, but it's still going to be an uphill, an uphill battle. I mean, the Warriors, Spurs, Rockets, Charlotte, those are the teams with the worst road records, right? The Pistons. So it's really, really confounding, confusing as to why they can't just bring it. It's three games in a row where they had a chance. You know, yes, Kaminga was out of this Memphis game, but the previous two games were the gettable games. You know what I mean? And then when guys were hurt, when John went out uh, because of his issues, that's when the Memphis game became very gettable as well. But uh, you move on. And as I've said before, I'm here for all of it. If it's this crazy just like run when everybody gets healthy and they figure it out, great. You know, it's going to be amazing. But again, repeating myself from like a month ago, two months ago, if they flame out, I'm here for it. Let's see what happens. You know, let's see where this team goes in which direction. I mean, as Warriors fans, <laughs> in order to, to survive, you either tune out for a while or just set your expectations. That's it. That's it. You don't know what you're going to get. Do the Warriors have a shot at the Bucks? Sure. Right? Sure, because they are 27-7 and seven at home. But the Bucks, I've always said they're the team that kind of would worry me the most if the Warriors were playing well and made it to the finals. You know, so... We'll see. We'll see how it goes. <laughs> the quick Wiseman watch. The Warriors game started about half hour after the Pistons game. And, you know, I like to peek in and see how Wiseman's doing. And 
he played well. He played well. And hey, as I've said, again, with the Wiseman trade, if Peyton comes back and he helps the Warriors get deep into the playoffs, make a finals run, then great. I'm good to go. But if it's something where by the time he gets back, the Warriors are in Cancun. If they're on summer vacation, then I'm like, what was the point? Because Wiseman, for all of his flaws, again, not a perfect player, but the Warriors game started a half hour after the Pistons game. But I picked in on the Pistons game. Wiseman, overall, 27 minutes, 8 for 13 from the field, didn't take threes, didn't get to the line, 13 boards, one block, 16 points, plus 13 on the night, the highest plus minus on the Pistons. They lost to the terrible Charlotte Hornets, who the Warriors have also lost to. And I get that. And anyone saying that, you know, Wiseman sucks, he's, <laughs> they could get him confused with Patrick O'Brien or Todd Fuller or J.B. Carroll or something like that. That's, that's silly to me. Again, not a perfect player, but could he have helped? Sure, maybe. You know, could he have been an asset over the summer if everything falls apart? You could have moved on from him and Poole. I mean, I always reference that. I don't know if it's reality, but hey, combine those contracts to somebody that actually would want those guys. I just don't like that trade because it felt like it was a trade made in in from weakness, you know, in, in panic. The Lakers had made a couple big moves and I'm sure Steph saw that and he was already leaning probably towards getting rid of Wiseman. But we are where we are, right? The Warriors roster is exactly the same with some guys out, but who is on the court, same as before. Like I said, not a perfect player, needs to be tougher, but he's finding it. And to say that he couldn't have been helpful, you know, especially when the team is looking like it has, it's it's dubious, it's dubious to me. You know what I mean? And to think that, again, I know it's his salary and I know it's Steph and Draymond and Kerr wanting to get the gang back together and everything like that. But, you know, we'll see. They were the ones that wanted this move made. And so it's up to them to right the ship. Plain and simple. It's on them to figure out, to get the other guys on the team to figure out how to play defense, to how, how to find the effort, how to summon the past, I guess. Because the present... It's looking a little slower. (laughs) It's looking a little more half-assed. And if they're saving it, great. I'd be really, really happy and really, really impressed. But again, we'll see. We'll see where that, uh, that goes. Anyway, that's all I got.